today I'm going to talk about backend, okay? But I, I, I'd like to give you, uh, let's say, 12 minutes to solve nine problems. Uh, you have a problem in front of you. It's going to be nine problems. I, I give you 12 minutes to finish all of them. And after 12 minutes, we will explain the best play, yeah? Go ahead and start. Thank you. Hello, hello. So we 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 finished. Um, so how was that? Was it easy? Oh, uh, uh, some people said yes. <laughs> some people said no. Okay. Um, either way, I hope you enjoy it. And the. Uh, So if you thought uh, this problem is so difficult, so why back, back game is so difficult from start with? Um, I believe there are a couple of reasons because why back game is so difficult. Um, first of all, um, basic strategy in back game is so different from ordinary game, okay? Um, you want to get hit, you know? In normal game, you want to hit. You don't want to get hit. But in back game, usually you want to get hit, and you don't want to hit. So the strategy will be almost opposite, yeah? So this is a, a very important reason, um, we, but we will review later. And uh, secondly, uh, you need a long span vision. I'm not sure if it's a co correct English or not, uh, but anyway. Um, what you are doing over the board and the outcome in the future has a you know, long distance. You will see the outcome much, much later. So um, you must have a clear vision. What are you doing? If you don't know what are you doing, you're going to lose, right? But in, in an ordinary game, in, in a normal game, for example, let's say you slot in the opening, yeah? In one or two rolls later, you will see the outcome immediately. Either you get hit, or he missed a shot and you make a point. It's very easy. So for example, in a normal game, uh, you're thinking about leaving anchor, you left the anchor, and you got crushed by some joker. So you will see the immediate reaction from your play. Uh, but in back game, um, it takes some time. Um, so you have to have some clear cut vision uh, to win the goal, and it, it, it takes a long time to see the result, okay? So it's very difficult to understand the vision. Um, next one is the, uh, the back game itself is very rare. Uh, I'm not sure how often back game it allies. I, I guess it's like two or three percent. It depends on how you play. Uh, what do you, what, what's your guess? You think it's more than three percent? I believe it's, it's about two or three percent. Um, because last, last weekend I played a tournament in Texas I played in tournament in Texas. I played 10 matches. Um, 10 matches is almost about 100 games. I only played three back games, yeah? So it was only three back games in, you know, total out of 100 games. And I, uh, I even thought uh, it was really lucky to get three back games. So I guess it's like between 2 and 3%. Very rare, so that you don't have much ex experience of back game. Or even if you study back game, you forget because it's so rare. Um, the last reason is no books are ever written. Um, there are thousands of backyard books out there, but uh, no books are specifically are focused on backyard. I have never seen it. Is there anyone? Yeah, I think somebody has to write a book about backyard. Um, this is a 
very important because you, you couldn't really study without the book, you know. Of course, there are, you know, very, you, there are many people who know how to play backgame, but uh, this book is much easier to run. <coughs> so, these are, I think, uh, the reasons that the why backgame is so difficult. Then I also want to provide a reason to study backgame. Uh, because if it happens so rare, why do you even bother to study backgame, right? But then um, I have, I like to play backgame because it very often ends up in four point game, yeah? It, either you win or lose, you can win uh, double gammon or you can lose double gammon. So it, it, it will be a four point game very often or even six point or eight point, you know? So it can be decisive or um, in DMP, uh, people could play back game because uh, Gammon doesn't really count. And in DMP, it's a very important game. So, uh, although back game is so rare, back game can be very important in your match. And the, also, the other reason is it's related to the um, reason why back game is so difficult, but uh, you can really outplay your opponent. You know, in, in normal back, back gammon, in normal games, uh, the difference between you and him are uh, usually very close. You know, nowadays people, everybody start with, I mean, study, not everybody, but many people study with a uh, computer. So they know how to play basically. But in back game, uh, some people have really no clue. So you can really outplay him. And it, uh, it's a good feeling, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, see, you see your opponent playing, you know, something that he doesn't know. And you, you know you have confidence, so it's very, very like uh, sadistic feeling. But and the uh, last reason is very fun and entertaining. Um, I mean, back, back, backgammon is a game, right? So you want to enjoy. And uh, backgammon is actually most interesting and fun part. So why don't you study and you know have some confidence and experience? Um, yeah. So we will see some uh, interesting positions. Um, so before that, uh, I'm going to explain the main strategies against back game. Uh, number one, try to get hit. Not try to get hit, okay? To gain timing, uh, not hit unless necessary. So ba basically, you want to get hit. Uh, and you, don't, you shouldn't hit unless it's necessary. Uh, as I uh, stated, it is completely opposite of the normal game. In normal game, uh, you want to hit and you don't want to get hit. And uh, the second strategy would be prime their back checkers. So if you put combine together, uh, the strategy would be play pure to make a prime. But what about the risk? OK, here is the positions. Um, white just uh, double slotted with 6 3. He played 6 down and 3 down, okay? In back game, uh, 6 3 down is the best play by far, okay? In normal game. But um, in the position here, with normal holding games, where he has only 3 checkers, 2 down is really a big blunder. Um, so why is that? I said in the previous slide, I said you wanted to get hit. But usually, in normal game, if you get hit, you are in danger of being primed or attacked, whatever it is. You know, you don't want to get hit in normal game. But in back game, it's, it's OK. I mean, still, you don't want to get hit. But I mean, getting hit not so, it's not the end of the world. Why? Can you see the difference? It's, it's very easy. Um, you see, in back game, obviously, uh, your opponent has four or more checkers back. In this case, red has seven checkers back, yeah? As a result, you know, we have only 15 checkers in the game. So if you spend four checkers here, you have only 11 checkers here. If you spend seven checkers here, you have only eight checkers here. You see, there, red has only eight checkers in offense. 
So his, uh, his power of containment, his ability of containment is very low. It's very limited. On the other hand, uh, look at this. He has it's normal, normal holding game. It's, I would say it's normal, a uh, three-point game. Um, he has only three checkers back, so that Red has, I mean, 12 checkers to contain him. So uh, Red has much more power to contain white checkers. So obviously, you don't want to get hit in this situation, right? If you get hit, it's a disaster, obviously. But in, in here, after you get hit twice, you are two on the bar, but so what? You know, there's nothing in here. And it takes a long time for red um, to, to contain you. So it's not really a big deal you get hit or not. And if you don't get hit, you can, you can make a bar point and you can, you can plan him. <coughs> so um, in short, uh, getting a hit has much smaller risk in back game. So you have to shift the ge gear and change your mind and okay, getting hit is not so catastrophe in back game. Um, so please put it in, in your mind. It's very important. <coughs> and the, uh, okay, of course, timing is everything. And you want to have a good timing. You don't want to have a bad timing. And please, um, please see uh, paper three, the last paper. Uh, some of you might have seen this uh, graph already because I, uh, I, I show them uh, very often, show it very often. Um, so X-ray is a pip count and Y-ray is equity. Um, here is a zero and here is a minus 10 pips, minus 20 pips, minus 30, minus 40, minus 50, minus 60. So in back game, uh, as you uh, d down in the lace, your equity will go up, basically, in the back game, basically. Of course, if you're trailing like 100 pips, uh, I mean, 200 pips, your equity will go down as well. But <laughs> in, in general, in back game, the more you back, the more you have uh, you know, equity. So, um, and if you comes back, um, even you are up in the lace, so you, it, it, it will be a holding game, yeah? So. You don't want to be in the middle. This is a, this is the worst worst uh, worst position here. You really want to be uh, uh, down in the lace uh, quite a bit, like 50, 60, 70, 80, or even 100 in some back games. But you don't want to be down like 30 pips, 20 pips. There's no timing for back game and no timing for holding game. That's the worst situation you you can be in. <coughs> so um, most back games, most battle of the back game battlefield will be somewhere here, yeah? You can really work hard to put your opponent in this position, or you can work hard to put yourself into this position, or sometimes, sometimes best strategy in back game is get out of the back game, okay? You shouldn't stick to back game. Back game is really um, the last option. You don't really wanna play, but sometimes you don't have a choice, but if you do have a choice, you really wanna get, get, get out of back game, yeah? So battle hit or back game is usually difficult problems are arise here. So keep in mind, you know, uh, where you are. If you are here, usually you want to go here, right? If you are here, if you are here, okay, you want to go here, right? You want to go this way. <coughs> okay, uh, stop talking too much and uh, let's get some problem. Problem number one. Uh, I, I'm sure some of uh, some of you might have seen this because uh, you know I uh, I, uh, I show it many times, but I li really like it, so I, I include it this time again. Five three. Uh, the best play here is uh, five out and three down. But most important part is uh, three. You gonna slot and leave it here. The idea uh, of throttling here is not covering, okay? You don't want to cover. Um, actually, if you do cover, like making a deuce point is, uh, you see, it's a huge blunder. So you don't, the idea is not making a deuce point, but leave it, it here and getting hit. 
um, after the best play, it's, it will be like this. Uh, this is after the play. Now, if red rolls, two six, two five, two four, and double two, those seven numbers, if, if red rolls seven numbers, um, he has to hit, he has no choice. He doesn't want to hit because it gives white a timing. So for example, if uh, red roll two one, what would you do? I, I have seen people playing 2-1 like 2 hit and 1 up or making a deuce point or whatever. It's all those um, all of them are blunder. With 2-1, you have to play 1 here and 2 here. You should avoid hitting, okay? This is like very, very basic strategy of backhand. So anyway, uh, slotting here, the idea is you want to get hit. And the, uh, yeah, that's it. You don't really care about uh, hit, hitting this guy, but you want to get hit. So um, problem number one is probably the most important position. And if you do not understand, uh, you have to work with it. And you can ask me later, maybe. Um, any questions? Yes? Hello. Um, Okay, so you explained to us the concept of getting hit and not hit. Yeah. So what do you think about concepts as racing efficiency or efficiency of spare checkers in general in this kind of position? Is that something you consider? Oh, yes, of course, of course. Uh, but the, the pip count, I mean, pip count and timing is the first place, and efficiency of the checkers is probably the second place. And this example, in this example, it's perfect. You know, you want to... You use your checker as you wish, right? So you wanna you wanna you wanna have checker in here, um, and you wanna get hit. So this is, that is not an ugly move, right? So this is it's it's good for either way. Okay. So let's go to problem number two. Um, this position actually happened in uh, my match in New York 2016. Uh, no, 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 actually this year, 2017, uh, against Falafo. Um, I rolled double two here, and of course I instantly uh, played one, two, three, four, right? You hit the checker, and you make a five climb, so how how bad it can be, you know? But then, uh, miraculously, I stopped and think about it. Uh, do I really want to hit in back game? Then the more I thought, you know, then the more I feel like, oh, it could be a mistake. Then I decided to play this way. Um, you don't really want to hit uh, as in back game. So um, you don't game by so I, I think this is a normal looking play. You know, you hit the checker, you make a five line, but by doing this, first of all, uh, red gains nine pips, yeah? And secondly, red has a chance to dance. If red dances, of course, red can get the timing. Um, and do we really need a five line? Not really. By my play, <coughs> By my play, I cleared the midpoint already, and I started to clear seven point because I need to clear seven point anyway. He, he, we don't really uh, prime him anymore because he has spare checkers over there and here, so he has a timing, and uh, it doesn't really contain anything. Um, and we, I didn't hit so that let didn't gain any pips, and it just. Uh, you know, good looking. And some of you might, some of you might think, um, but it leaves double shot, right? You you might you might get hit. That's true. But 
Not always. How about four, six, or five, six? I mean, any any four and five except four, three, and five, three um, leaves a bunch of blots. So cannot really hit this guy unless four, three, or five, three, right? Do we agree? Double five. Okay. So I I wanted to make sure. Yesterday I was making a rickshaw. Okay. I wanted to make sure. Um, I wanted to know if 4.3 and 5.3 even hit, okay? So, and I will show you the result here. So I played this, yeah? And suppose let's roll 4.3. I thought, I thought let gonna hit because, you know, it's just a hit and cover, so why not? But <coughs> computer says uh, hitting is almost a blunder. Yeah, it's actually a blunder, big blunder. So even 4-3, of course, 5-3, uh, uh, you cannot hit. I will show you that it's 5-3. Five, 5-3 three. Five, three, uh, hitting is still a blunder. Um, double 5, somebody mentioned double 5. I did not check, but I guess double 5 probably is still a mistake. Oh, no, okay, double 5 you can hit. So only double five you can hit and make. Four three and five three you should not hit because it's just too many too many blots. So uh, my point was even those numbers already cannot hit, so there's really no risk. And uh, by by playing this way, you 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 clear the midpoint. You don't gain any extra pips. And you are started to clear the bar point. I mean, uh, bar point. So, it's everything is so perfect. Uh, only cost, real cost is uh, Mick pointed out double five. Double five, you get hit and cover. But you know, it's double four. You you can't cover. Uh, okay. No. Uh, with double four, you should not uh, hit. You just uh, stick to um, back game. Well, the, the thing is, uh, Red already had a decent timing, so you know he, it's a good 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 plan to play two three back game now instead of going forward. Okay, uh, let's move on to problem number three. Four two. So the, la the, the best play in problem number three is four coming out and two down. And the, uh, the idea is you want to make a four point uh, by playing pure. Uh, you don't really care about getting hit because he has so many blots around and his board is so weak. So uh, getting hit is not uh, as bad and if we, they, if Red doesn't hit, you can cover uh, with any deuce or five, so. Um, as I said before, in back game, or against the back game, you have to play pure. Uh, you have to play, you know, uh, you, you, uh, you have to go for the best point. You have to go for the points that you want, did you want to make. Um, again, um, the, the reason, is, uh, reason for white is the uh, red board is so, so weak, so getting hit is not costly. I would, I would change a little bit, okay? I will change a little bit. What, what, what about now? Now, uh, red has made a four point, and, and the less blot, of course, and the, what about now? Do you still go for the big play, like um, 2016 and uh, six to four? Yes, now this is overplay. This is too much to go for the uh, big play. 
So now you have to hit and run as in normal game be because uh, it's just way too risky to play like this. Um, with this three-point board, um, with double blood, uh, red really can go in four, yeah? So it's just overplay. You should not do with it. But <coughs> with the uh, open four point, with the open four point, um, you have to go for uh, pure play. So it all depends. It's not always correct to play big, you know? So you have to be careful about your board, about his board, and about your strengths of the board. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, okay, did you hear me? Um, so 6-2, the best play with 6-2 is just doing nothing and make, uh, make a five point. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, best strategy against back game is obviously uh, don't let him making a second anchor. If you do hit, for example, if you do hit, um, you know, it simply gives him a chance to uh, make a second anchor. Um, and he is down like 52 pips, so he has a real chance to time his back game. So why don't you give him a chance to play a back game? You just play simple without, without a hit. <coughs> this way, of course, Red has no chance to make a second anchor because Lead is not on the bar. Um, so it's quite obvious, but uh, if you get used to hit, you know, we are trying to hit, right? If you see the blood and the hitting number, you hit. Like, like we are trying in this way, but in back game, you have to be careful. You are already up 38 pips. So why do you need extra 14 pips? No, it's just giving him a timing. It's just giving him a chance, even chance to make a second anchor. So just play pure, I mean, just play solid, and no, no, no checkers on the bar, so there's no chance. Yes? Okay. Oh, okay, um, the answer is I don't combat any numbers because I don't see the numbers over the board. <laughs> what I think is, okay, if, uh, but y Michelle, you have a good point. If we have a stronger board, okay, this is only two-point board, yeah? If we had, like, let's say, three-point board or even four-point board, your strategy would be correct. You hit two checkers and go for the blitz so that you can win more gammons. But in this case, even if you hit twice, most likely he will end up anchor somewhere or he, you know, it, you, don't, you don't gain that much because, um, yes, white has five prime, but white's board is only two point board. So it's not like you are going for blitz and you kill him immediately. It takes time. If you have like three point board or four point board, then you, it's make more, make more sense to go for blitz. But it, it's probably it's too early, I think. And I mean, this is just so strong. Uh, Led has no game, basically, um, unless, I don't know. I don't know how he wins. Of course, he wins sometimes, but uh, it's just so easy for white. OK, uh, <laughs> this is, uh, this is uh, tomorrow we do it, OK? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean. 
But backgammon is very difficult, so uh, we don't know all the answers. Uh, all we could do is just getting uh, closer to the right answer. Still, we, we are not perfect, okay? We just make yourself too close to the right answer, so you have good chance to be in right. Okay, go for the uh, problem number five. And um, for one, Uh, the best play with four one is hit the four point and slot with the ace. Okay, uh, you don't want to really hit. Um, a little bit quiet, please. Um, you don't really want to hit, but you don't have a choice because one four is you are forced to hit. And when you have to hit, you always want to hit the this guy, not this guy, because you don't want to stuck be here, right? If you hit this guy, and uh, you might roll anti-joker, like double five, or double sixes, or six five, you can crunch your board. So you always want to go forward, you want to hit here, and then slot with the ace, because you want to get hit. So that's the whole idea. Um, but uh, frankly speaking, this is not, uh, uh, this is, uh, you have to know it. You, you have to like, just just see it and do it. You, I, I. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, okay, this is not a play with the logic. Okay, this is like, uh, f mm, once you practice a lot with the back game, this game, this play will be automatic. Okay, you you don't need to think. Okay, you don't want to hit here. You hit and you slot. That's it. Um, whenever you see uh, spear checkers on here, front loaded, you really want to use it somewhere here, right? So this is a perfect roll, actually. Four one, you hit. Okay, how about three one? What would you do with three one? Yes, um, I, uh, I would play three here and ace here. Okay, you don't hit and you use, just, uh, you use, use the checkers here, you know. Um, how about the... Uh <sighs> okay, uh, don't, don't uh, go too much example. <laughs> but uh, I, I hope you understand my point. Um, it's not uh, play with the logic, it's just, you know, play with the feeling. Um, against the back game, you want to utilize those checkers and you want to get hit and go back and, you know, recycle them. Okay, go for problem number six. Yeah, uh, I, I hope um, it makes sense for everybody now. Um, first of all, uh, this case you want to hit, because if you do not hit, like if you don't hit like 15 to 7 without the hit, then what's going to happen? Red can roll a 6 and come out, and maybe red can play 1-3 back game. Maybe red can have some timing. But by hitting, by hitting, you will contain six checker against five prime. So lead has really hard time to coming out. And secondly, obviously you should not cover uh, with all the explanation I made. <laughs> you really want to get hit this one, right? So cover is actually a blunder or something. Oh, it's not a blunder. Okay, but uh, it is really a bad play because it makes him dance and you know. You, you miss a chance to getting hit. So you should not cover. And finally, you don't want to lift six here and you leave hit here and two. Because in case, in case he rolls one six or three six, after this, after the best play, in case red roll one six or three six or even two six, you want to get hit, okay? 
so make sure uh, in case he was a six, he, you want you you will be hit, right? So this is the reason why um, lifting is not a good idea here. <laughs> and the uh, and try to leave the uh, checkers here in the next row. For example, let's say uh, red row three five and three enter. Then white shouldn't leave these checkers. You you have to leave as it is, and you play with other checkers. <coughs> All good? OK. Um, actually, all those six problems are easy part. Uh, I'm not sure how you feel, but uh, it, I would say it's easy part. And the next uh, three problems will be a little bit tricky. Um, and maybe it's not very um, educational, because it's so rare. But for sure, it's fun. For sure, it's interesting. <coughs> Problem number seven. Uh, two one. Okay, and um, two one you have to hit, and you have to break the board. <sighs> Um, first of all, you want to hit. You, you you want to hit this way. You want to hit this time because um, uh, you want to make a five prime. Yeah, by hitting this, you have five and six to cover to make the five prime. So you want to hit to make a five prime. Um, the next, the ace, um, you just give up the three point because you don't need it. You actually wanted to get hit. Let's say uh, any deuce or three. Uh, lead has to hit, and uh, white will uh, come back to the 24 point and uh, you know recycle your checker so that you can get the timing. If you play, if you play normal way, if you don't break your board, lead might have some timing. You know, uh, lead is down 80 pips and he has holding four point, so lead might have a timing. So why don't you just give him? Uh, you know, chance to hit and uh, get your own timing. So, um, again, this is kind of play. Once you see it, you say, ah, you, really? you see? Once you see it, you understand. But you, if you don't see it, you have no chance to understand, right? <coughs> but it's quite hard to play it over the board, okay? So next one would be uh, problem number eight. And uh, once you see it, this is very easy play. Uh, you hit this guy, and you break the um, climb. Huh? Yes. Because this is the exception. <laughs> no, but I mean, um, okay, let me explain. You know, don't get me wrong. You know, you don't really want to break your prime, okay? Uh, <coughs> the reason why you break a prime is not because you want to break a prime, but because you want to get hit this guy, okay? That's the whole reason. You don't really want to. You don't really want to break the prime, but by this way, all the aces will be forced to hit. And look, he has nothing over there, so getting hit is doesn't cost us really nothing. Let's say red roll ace five or whatever. Then white is on shake from the bar. White has five to hit if you want to hit, you know, and four to cover and six to cover. So you can remake the prime in next row, right? <coughs> so even if you get hit, any four and six you remake the prime, or even deuce, it's okay, right? 
And uh, of course, one moment. Of course, if he doesn't roll a ace, let's say, let's say red roll a two six and enter with deuce, and you roll a six, you're not gonna cover this one, yeah? You cover this one and keep the prime and leave it here. And the whole point is you just leave your checker here and try to get hit. If you get hit, listen, if you get hit, you gain 24 pips, okay? You get 24 pips, it's huge pips, believe me. So by doing this, uh, so you have like 30% of a chance to gain 24 pips. It means like 7.2 pips you gain already. <coughs> um, so any questions? Uh, is there any mic? Uh, okay. What would uh, the change be if the red has made his five point? Uh, okay, we can check it. But I doubt it makes any change. But maybe. Uh, so what? W which way do we want to do? Huh? Excuse me. I don't need it here. Sorry. I don't take some some either checker. <laughs> like that? Okay, let's check it. So it's it's the same idea. Uh, you uh, okay? So I'm gonna show you the best play is um, best play is I I don't actually don't like it. I, I would hit the, that guy over there. <coughs> but anyway, uh, you hit and... So even with five point made, uh, you still have to hit and hit on the, this. How about uh, this two five, for example? This is essentially the same thing. If you roll two five, I, I, I hope everybody do two hit and five slot, yeah? This is easy, but it's practically the same idea. Um, but you break the prime, but so what, okay? So what, because you have so many numbers to remake the five prime, so this is not really a danger, you know? Most likely, most likely you're gonna flip prime in the next check anyway, so it's not too much risk involved, okay? Do you hit and cover or you blitz him on or you hit twice on the ace again? Ah, good question. Okay. So his question is let's say red roll like one six, yeah? And uh, suppose white roll five six from the bar. Uh, do I hit twice or do I make a prime? Right? Um, wow. I don't know. <laughs> Be because in this case, if you hit, it's very difficult to remake supply, many, you know. So it, it's, it's hard, hard now. I, I don't really know. I don't really know. My gut feeling would be hit twice. OK, let, let me check. It could be interesting. <coughs> OK, so hitting twice is, is correct. Um, yeah. So hitting twice. But yes. Huh? No, 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 no. This is um, uh, some problems I found it online. Online. But this could come up your matches too. I mean, everybody matches. Um, so, do you? Uh, yes. What, what about it? I, I can see there are five blots around. If you if you get hit with double one in this position, I think it's dangerous. We can just lose straight away with five 
Double one, uh, then comes out and hit five lots. No, 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 no. no. Don't no. See? This is a common illusion. Oh, what happened if he lost double A's and get, gets triple hit? No, it's not, not gonna go this way. You see, even after the double A's, red has no board, yeah? And uh, white has five builders, I mean five primes and three, three point board. And of course, you could lose, you could lose, but the chances are not that high. Getting hit is so much more important. Even after double aces, it's it's not it's not easy for let go going for forward. Okay, let's go to the problem number nine. So problem number eight and problem number nine is essentially the same problem, same position, but it's just extreme, more extreme. I will show you. Okay. Once again, let me let me emphasize that I don't really want to break a five point. But if I get hit the five point, I can have so many returns shots from the bar. Any six I can return hit. Any four I will hit. You know, and I can get some timing. Especially if he was an ace, it would be very nice. So now I have, you know, so many covers to the five point. And the, the other reason is this is a kind of emergency. Because if you do play like a normal way, um, Red really has a chance to uh, play decent back game. Red has a uh, down 104 pips. So maybe you, you could lose in back game. So you don't really want to see it. So. It's the same idea, it's just an extreme example. Uh, by the way, by the way, this position ha has happened in my real match. And of course, I, uh, you know, I screwed up, I did not see it. And when I saw it, I thought it was like a bug, or I thought the you know, computer went uh, blow up or something. I, don't, I didn't believe it. But the more I thought, you know, oh, maybe then I begin to understand the logic behind the move, okay? Especially if you have a checker here, of course you play with five, right? And six, I can understand. But four is very extreme example. But if you look at this closely, your, your risk is not that high because you have so many builders over there. You have like, how many checkers? Uh, you have actually 13 checkers here. <laughs> so uh, the chances are you, you're gonna win the battle for the five point, okay? And you can kill his timing quite badly by doing this. You, ca you cannot just sit and watch uh, how his timing develops. So this is the uh, um, end of my lecture. If you don't have any question anymore. OK, I really hope you enjoy back game. And see you next time. Thank you.